Hello, good morning. Welcome to Stump and Chat. It is Tuesday the 5th of April. Had to think then. What was the date today? We are motoring on, aren't we? Heading towards Easter. So, weather in Gloucestershire this morning, bit cloudy, bit of sun trying to make its way through, um, but temperatures are rising, which is all very good. So, let me just check that I'm live in the right place. See who is hopping on and joining us this morning. Okay, I am live in the right place. Always a good, good way to start a live. So, who is joining me this morning? How are you? Where are you from? If if I don't know you, if you're new to, if you've just caught me uh, scrolling through Facebook, um, I'm Kerry. I'm a Stampin' Up demonstrator in Gloucestershire in the UK. Um, and I know random people do stop by and kind of flick through and then don't hang there very often. I'm aware that I've got the, the window right behind me as well. So you're seeing all my floaty hair. All the endy bits. I had it cut last week, little trim. Not very good at having my hair cut and have my roots done as well. So, but yeah, my hair is definitely, my, my hair's really dry at the moment. So I, I did get myself another mask because my, my mask had run out. So um, like a little mask, like a treatment that you put on your hair, maybe once a week. And I, I'm sure that that's why my hair's gone really dry. So good morning, Kay. How are you? Hello, Janet, my lovely. How are you doing? What kind of weather are you having in Spain? I bet it's nice and bright and fresh. I am good, thank you, Kay. I hope you are too. You're telling me that you're good, so everything good with you. So this morning, I have inked up the Flowing Flowers stamp set. Janet, it's cold and wet. No, I'm sorry. We're normally the opposite, aren't we? When we're having a bit of dreary weather, you're having some good. So I'm going to be like sending a bit of warm warmth your way here. So I have to take my glasses off to look down at the other end of the studio. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit grey out there, but the sun is trying. It's trying to come through. I hate these glasses. I hate having to wear glasses. It's so annoying. But that's the way it is. I don't know if I fancy contact lenses. Really not sure about that. So... Well, let's hope the weather brightens up for you, Janet. So we've had like a really cold spell. We had rain, not yesterday, day before. Um, did we have rain yesterday? I don't remember. I had the children. I had the girls yesterday afternoon. So full on busy afternoon um, of play with them, which was amazing. But I was tired by the end of it. So anyway, playing with the flowing flowers stamp set, which is from the mini catalogue. So the January to June mini catalogue. Um, I've This is my first play with it. I've not inked it up before then. I had a few stamp sets on my shelf that I hadn't even touched. Um, and sadly, I'd not even touched one of my celebration sets either. So I think I'm being quite sensible with my purchasing and I'm trying to focus kind of on a stamp set, on a product and then kind of share as many different things as I can with it. Because I think sometimes we need to see, you know, more than one thing done with something. Because if we're going to spend our money on a product, we need to see value and we need to see that we can do multiple things with it. So, Kay, you love the flowing flowers. You're eager to see what I create. That makes me nervous, but... Hopefully you will enjoy um, what I create. Good morning, Ellie. How are you? You're going to be popping out shortly, so you'll catch up later. That is good to hear. Thank you. Um, ahead of the time for coming back. So always pop on hashtag replay if you're catching up on the replay. And then if you put a message or a comment, I, I will know about it. So hello, Kim. How are you doing? So playing with the flowing flowers today. I think I'm going to set you down. I've got two cards to create. Um, okay, you're sure you love what I make? Yeah, sometimes I have to question. It's, it's very difficult. I think it's difficult because, well, it's not difficult, but sometimes you feel conscious about what you're doing when you're sharing it with others. When you're creating for yourself, if you're not quite happy with something that you've created, you can kind of, you know, put it to one side and forget about it. But when you're sharing it on the internet, I always feel 
sometimes like, I'm not sure what are other people going to think, but I guess that's the great thing. We've, we've all got different taste, even though there are oh, over 1500 demonstrators in the UK, we are all unique and individual. And what we do with a stamp set um, as an individual will be totally different to the next person. So, I mean, we're all inspired by each other. Um, but yeah, I just think different people do different things and that's the good thing about what we do. We're, we're kind of all unique, aren't we? So you're hoping for some good weather by the end of the week, Janet. Well, I hope it comes your way as well. Right, let me set you down on my desk, move everything out of the way and let us get crafting. I've got two, another favourite thing on my desk today as well. So excuse the palm of the hand. Let's set you down. I don't know where Alfie is. He didn't come running up. I'm saying that he could be right under my feet and just being quiet today. Let's have a little zoom. That may have been way too much. Get some light on the subject. Let's go out a little bit more. Get the old grid paper down. Yes, I am creating with the beautiful shapes yet again. And another reason for using these is that they are carrying over to the new annual catalog. Um, and also I've been able to pre-order a stamp set from, I nearly tripped over my chair then, let's move it out of my way from this beauty. I'm not allowed to show you inside, but it is stunning. It's coming in May. I will be having a catalogue launch here. I just need to finalise a date. I'm trying to fit it around everything else that's going on here. So let's get this grid down. I think we're straight. Yeah, so I've pre-ordered a stamp set that goes with this. And I'm super excited for it to come. I did not a huge pre-order, um, a reasonable sized pre-order, um, but I probably will hold my hand up and say it could be a second or a third pre-order because that's usually what happens. You know, I try and be really tame to start with and um, think, you know, with my business head on. And then as as the month goes through, I'm like, oh, just order that other new set as well because because I like it. So Flowing Flowers, as I've said, it's in the January, I've put January to July, but it's January to June. I did that after I created my sticker and then I was like, I'm not going to waste another sticker. So hello, Zanna, how are you doing? You've got these dies. They are fabulous, aren't they? Absolutely adore them. Um, I loved it when we had the hexagon punch, which I still got. It's on my retired shelf, but I do use it. But I just love the hexagons. So Kling stamp set, £24. We've got a mixture of gorgeous florals that are quite detailed and slightly distinctive where we've got shadows and then we've got, um, so we've got three florally images and then some really good greetings kind of in amongst them. Then let's show you my colour combo, which is a bit hard to see. So I've got petal pink, no surprise there soft suede and I'm using the craft white the whisper white ink so those are my colors I'm just going to turn my charger off as my macbook is fully charged let's move that out of the way a bit sniffy today so I had Vivi and Eva yesterday afternoon until bedtime and they've both got sniffles and a bit of a cough so I don't think I'm ever going to avoid it <laughs> okay let's lay these ink pads out so the beautiful shapes you can find these in the January to June mini as I've said they are gorgeous I use them a lot I love that we've got circles thrown in here as well and I love that we've got these kind of um embossed dies as well so that inner part with the lines on actually embosses so super super brilliant have i got one of those cut out yeah i've got one cut out here so the circle one just so that you can see how it embosses there so this is in our craft cardstock which is also carrying over to that new catalogue 
which is good to know. Right, let us bring in some kits. So, a lot of white going on. I've got quite a few scraps here ready. Got some petal pink. That looks very long. It's fine. Um, some scraps for stamping and then a piece of crumb cake as well. So you haven't used the dies yet, Zana. Okay, so I've used them a lot. I've used them a lot. So I'm going to be using the hexagons today. So, um, and you love punches. Yeah, punches are great. One of the punches I'm using today is the bow punch. So that's the code there. And this, I think it's on a bundle with the bows and blossoms, I want to say. But my, my aged brain could be giving you false information there. But absolutely love this. So I'm going to be using that. Pulling out my timber embossing folder because embossing just kind of lifts a layer doesn't it i think it just gives such a wow let's put that by the machine it gives such a wow to a project right let's start with our base so piece of basic white there's my bone folder so it measures five and three quarters by eight and a quarter Thank you, Kay, for confirming that. Yeah, I did think it was the boughs and blossoms, which I will grab it off my shelf. And I am gonna say I've not seen this in the new catalog. So I'm thinking it's gonna be heading its way out of the mini catalog. And won't be making its way to the new one, which is kind of sad because I do love it. I've done a lot with it. I did my um, creative escape with it. So, right, so we folded our base and then I've got a layer of crumb cake and this one measures three and seven eighths. So it's slightly narrower than my four and an eighth card width by three. So, three and seven eighths by three. And that height could be anything really. If you had a piece roughly this size in your scrap box or your scrap envelope, whatever you keep your scraps in, you know, just go use up the pieces. Don't be cutting into big sheets, use up what you've got. And talking of using up what you've got, I have got this piece of petal pink, which measures two and three quarters by four and an eighth. And that's quite an important size for me. So if I grab a piece of cardstock, just a random color. Two and three quarters will fit along a portrait piece three times exactly, okay? Because it's eight and a quarter. And also four and an eighth is halfway down the middle. So quite often when I'm cutting layers and mats for my cards, I will use four and an eighth because I know I'm gonna get exactly two from a sheet. If I use four and a quarter, I'm gonna be left with another piece, which yep, can be used for something else. But if you're creating batches of cards and stuff, you know, why not get the most out of a sheet? So, and if you went, four and an eighth this way and cut it that way, you would then get four this way, okay? You could even make this slightly bigger at two and seven eighths. I'm kind of baffling you with numbers, but think about what you've got. And, you know, when you, if you find a piece that works well from your scraps, use it up, but also try and be savvy about, you know, um, getting the most from you know measuring so two and three quarters is definitely a, a piece you know a measurement that i will use so i know i can get three cut three pieces from across the width of of an a4 so yeah i think it is about being smart okay because you know everything costs money these days so um i know we're quite quite savvy as crafters but 
sometimes you have to just be that little extra bit savvy and and what you purchase them will just go so much further you've all seen my scrap bags embarrassingly i'm gonna grab a couple to embarrass you what's the worst one this is probably the worst scrap bag that i have soft succulent one of my most favorite colors look at all those pieces but i go to my scrap bags well they're not a bag it's an envelope i go to them all the time okay before i get my color combination and then it will i will pull out those envelopes of the colors i'm using and i will try and use pieces from there before i cut into a, a brand new sheet so yeah oh my goodness exactly that but she who never used to like green and i feel surrounded by it so yeah use use up what you've got and, and where i'm going with this i'm actually going to be layering these two together now in my head when i created my card i cut a piece this size and i was going to put this one on the top but in theory you could cut just two strips from your scrap bag. Let's take that away. And stick them behind. And you would never know that that wasn't that piece underneath. So, yeah, definitely think about how you are utilising what you've got. Because all the pennies that you will save could then be put towards that new stamp set or that new die set that you've been um, wanting. And yeah, you're right, Kay. Scraps are great for punching things out as well. Um, great for using things up because you will always find that right width of scrap that you need. Right, let's get started. First things first, I want to emboss this piece of crumb cake with the timber. And what I like to do is follow this line on the embossing folder so that I know my piece is straight and I'll just run that through quickly oh my shoulder is giving me grief I've got a dodgy shoulder and a dodgy leg and it's making me feel very old I mean I am kind of old but love the timber so this one is carrying over thank goodness i've set all of my retiring products to one side so that i kind of know what is going um oops sorry i knocked that then what is going and what is staying um, and that just helps me when i'm using product to kind of know where i am sorry about the wobble then so i'm going to put that to one side i'm going to pull back my base layer bring in a piece of scrap and of course pull out one of my blending brushes and we're going to add a bit of colour to the background of our base. So I know that I used this last in this colour. So this is petal pink. So circular motion, I'm going to take a bit off so it's not too harsh. And I'm going to add some colour in this top corner. I don't want to go too heavy on my original. I did add quite a lot and I wasn't sure if I loved it. So I just start gently and then just apply a little more pressure. I think I might be happy with that. Okay, so I've just added like a gradient in each corner. And then, what have I done with you? Pulled out, look at the state of it. I did give it a wash. I've pulled out one of my very old aqua painters. Um, I don't think we call them that anymore in the catalogue. Where is my catalogue? Do we call them watercolour pens? Now I've got to even find them. 
Oh, I'm not going to faff. Anyway, we do sell these, and if you buy them, they're water brushes now, right? Okay. I, when I first bought these, they were called Aqua Painters. Um, and the way I'm going to use it today is I'm going to take my soft suede ink pad, give it a little squish. Now, if you've got the new style ink pads like these, they are slightly firmer, the lids on them, so it's a little bit hard to add ink. You can see I've already done some. And what I'm doing is I'm squeezing both of these sides together and adding ink into the lid. And then I'm gonna open this up. Pop a couple of drops of water in there. I should have checked that this is clean. Let me check on a scrap. Now. And then I'm just going to create like a little puddle, a very wet puddle on my brush. So it, it, it's quite wet on here and just add, I'm going to tap it with my bone folder and just add some gentle splats hopefully you can see that a bit more up there let's just put the lid on and then i would wash that out after and probably get that out with a piece of kitchen roll or tissue because i don't really want if I left it open, it will dry like it did last time, but really I want that clean. I don't want to close that up and have water kind of absorbing into my ink pad. But we just end up with a nice kind of soft speckled background, which I don't think is showing up amazingly on the view. Right, I've just refocused it, so hopefully that will work. And what I'm going to do is start by adding these two layers together first. Everything is alive today. And I haven't had my Tombow going yet this morning. So let's see whether, which side are we using? Let's see whether it's going to play ball, which it is. I'm just going to mount these two together and I want a slightly more... So I've got this bang in the middle of this line so I can check for the overhang and line it up with lines and then we kind of know that it's straight. Hello Vicky, how are you doing? Thank you for stopping by. So we're playing with the flowing flowers today first time I've inked this one up obviously I've made my already designed my card with it but first time of play was to create these cards for today so what I'm going to do next is put these this layer on here and then we can do some stamping so I'm going to put some Tombow on those edged pieces as well I'm just going to pop this right down in the middle, I guess, will be fine. It could go lower, it could go higher. But we're just gonna pop it right down in the middle. Like that. So we're just layering up. You've got your pre-order, how exciting. Oh, it's just lovely, isn't it? It's just amazing when you get that catalog and some new products arrive. It's so exciting. Nothing better than having just one new stamp set to create with, is there? Doesn't have to be loads of stuff. Even just one new stamp set can just open up doors for so much more creativity. Right, let's do a bit of stamping and we've got some die cutting to do as well. So the Flowing Flowers is a cling stamp set. I've mounted, got some blocks ready to mount. So I'm going to use today just this large image. It will just about fit on a D block. 
if you feel more comfortable to use it on a larger blog or even on your Stamparatus, then you know that's a much bigger platform and it makes it easier. And then on this card, I'm gonna have the just a note because I love that, because that can mean anything. You could be sending that for any reason, what's an, whatever. You could say just a note on your birthday. So the hue of happiness suite is beautiful. I know, I'm excited to share. I'm very excited to share. That one didn't go on my pre-order. I was torn, totally torn with what to get. I wanted to get everything, but my little business head was telling me to be sensible for now so i'm going to ink up the flower have a look at that the detail on that you can see so let's just tap 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 and we'll do a couple of these in the petal pink beautiful how beautiful is that? It never looks so good on camera as it does in real life. Right. I'm gonna snip off that because I can use that in a minute. And what I'm gonna do is fussy cut around here very, very quickly. Check if I'm in shot. So what have you all been up to at the weekend? What have you been doing? So on Saturday, I got to attend a Stampin' Up! event online which I would much prefer to it have been in person, but that's just the way it is for now. Um, but it was an online event. This event is happening over several days. So different demonstrators will be attending the event on different days. I cannot share anything about it. Um, anything that we talked about or demonstrations that we saw, but I absolutely loved it. I got to online network with some demonstrators from around the UK um, and I just came away from it buzzing. I had such a good time, was really looking forward to it um, and saw some really fabulous demonstrations and some great ideas too. So um, yeah, I need to get planning on my catalogue launch party. I already know which stamps that I'm going to be using and I'll just use the word Maybe it's two words. Teacup. Kerry, what are you doing? Not concentrating. Right, on this flower. Party taxi for Emma after working Saturday morning. Right, okay, yeah. That is the trouble, isn't it? You become a bit of a taxi service. So I want to trim around the centre part. Sorry, I think I was totally out of shot. I'm kind of following this line that's going around here so there's like an inner flower so yeah saturday morning i was networking and learning and sharing and having fun and saturday afternoon i did a bit more work what did jason and i do then uh which bit am i cutting Oh, it's snoring under the table. Um, what did I do on Saturday afternoon? I know I worked until about three o'clock. Let's just cut right around the edge. Yeah, I worked till about three. I think we took somebody down the L-A-N-E. He even knows what that means. So intelligent. So I've just chopped out a centre part. And then... Ah, I remember. Sophie came over and we had dinner. And earlyish kind of night. We were both very tired. Well, all of us are very tired. Um, so we had an earlyish kind of night. And then on Sunday, we Jason wanted to go and look at a car in London. 
even though the weather was good, typical, but um, he really wanted to go and look at this car. So we went in the motorhome. So it meant that we could take Alfie and that, you know, he wasn't just sort of in the boot of the car. He was in the motorhome. He can look out the window. So yeah, that was most of Sunday taken up by the time we went and got back. So you're not doing your launch until the 21st, Vicky. Yeah, I'm not sure. I've got a couple of dates in mind, but I need to... I need to just juggle things around, I think, to get that date set. So I need these two hexagons to begin with. Just pull in my plates. And we want a bit of scrap. And what I'm going to do to start with is lay this one down. And I'm going to cut this one at the same time. Let's grab a bit of washi. Because I know they're going to move. Let's just trim that off. Wibbly wobbly plate. But it's always good, like when you're in the motorhome you're that much higher up, you get a good view of everything. And you know, it's nice. It was just nice to be out and about, to be honest. Um, I don't really go, go far in the week. If I'm not working in my studio, then I'm usually with the grandchildren. So I don't venture anywhere really. So it was really nice to just get out and about. Let's just cut these. And then we had, I think was it Saturday night, we had kind of like a buffet dinner when Sophie came round. We had like bread and cheese and we bought this ol um, olive oil, not olive oil, balsamic vinegar, I think I was telling you about it. And had dipping bread in oil, which is not very healthy, but it's a weekend treat, isn't it? So that was yummy. Okay, so I've just cut, put the two dies together and then created myself a frame. And got one that I did earlier as well, because I need both of those. And I think, do a little bit of stamping frog eating and then I think we can start sticking. Now I've pulled out this skinny strip, but I have a feeling I'm going to go on here because I need to do a bit of practicing. My larger, the greeting that I created on my original, I had a wider strip, so I may need a wider strip of paper. Uh, also on Saturday, my craft gin box arrived, which is always exciting. It's like Christmas, opening it up to see which speciality gin has arrived and what treats and goodies they've put in there as well. So what I'm going to do to start with I can already see that the, the greeting is quite low to the bottom of my rubber, yet when I look from this side, it's quite high to the bottom of the stamp. So I'm going to line it up with a line on my grid. Let's do that and see if we can get this to be central. If not, I'll just keep trying. Um, Holding my breath. A little bit low, so I'll go a bit higher this time. So I didn't crack open the gin. That's better. I actually had, but I'm such a lightweight when it comes to drinking, but I had some wine left over from last weekend. So I used that up. And actually we babysat on Friday night as well. We babysat for all three while Jack and Coles went out to the cinema and then went and had a bite to eat. So, lovely weekend. They come and go, don't they? But they soon come round again. So we've got just a note. So that was in the soft suede. Now I think we can start layering. We can do a bit of punching. Let's punch out a couple of things from here. This is a scrap. 
Um, now, do you think about when you are punching, because if you take quite a big scrap, you're going to waste quite a lot of cardstock if you just, if you're punching, you know, just one, it's okay. But if you're doing a whole load of these, I recommend that you take your ruler, you measure the width of this leaf if you're punching out these leaves. What I tend to do is measure the width. So I would say that was like one and a half inches and I would look for strips of cardstock in my scraps first that would kind of fit that. If not, I would cut strips so that you can then kind of layer this in and punch and then kind of get another one from the other side. And, you know, I'm being, I'm being tight again, but we have to, we have to. To start with, I'm just gonna take that one out of the end like that and then this one I do it this way no I do it this way just at an angle I can still get another one out of that end adore this punch don't we just love our punches and I'm gonna leave those naked I think let's have a look might just do something with this one let's bring this back in pull my blending brush back in I'm just checking comments it's actually it hasn't thrown me out today and I'm just gonna add a little bit of kind of blush To this so can you see how it will just pop out a little bit so that it's not too stark right let's start mounting right first of all I want to add oh, I'm getting to the end of another sheet add some dimension to this hexagon frame now remember you've got the larger hexagons in this set so you can kind of create any, you know, different combinations of, of frames like this. But we'll start with laying this one down first. I did also do a little bit of gardening. That might have been Saturday. A little bit of gardening. I'm going to put this one kind of centrally between my crumb cake layer. You know, with the point going up. And then I'm just going to add in these two. Yeah, I Jason helped me to get to the bottom of my compost bin. So we've been here four and a half years and I've never used any of my compost. So we pulled out the bars at the bottom and it was quite hard work to, to dig it away. But I'm just going to pop these yeah, like that. My hexagon's a little bit further over than I wanted this one. It should have been over a bit, but it'll be fine. So I've just layered those down like that. Let's push you in a bit. So yeah, I managed to get some some of that compost on one of my one of my beds in preparation for kind of planting stuff. But I really need to get to a garden centre. Oh gosh really need to change this bone folder for one that looks a bit prettier. <laughs> it's a bit better. <laughs> Let's move that one out of the way. Nice branded one. That was for centre stage. It's got glue all over it as well. Good thing about the adhesive remover is that it will pull off any sticky bits that you don't want. 2018, goodness gracious. It feels like it was that long ago that we had an actual event where we could meet people. Well, in fact, it was three years, wasn't it? So 2019. Let's start with this flower. I am so hoping that in November, our on stage will take place in Vienna. I am super excited for that. I would love to go back 
It's the place where I've earned my very first incentive trip and it was a very special trip because it was just for the Europeans and I think out of the whole of Europe there were only 25 of us that earned the trip and it was very it was very exclusive very you know personal it was an amazing trip so I would love to go back there being amongst what am I doing oh my brain has gone how have I cut that it's got to be like that I think I've just chopped into that little bit down there, which is throwing me. That's not right. Oh, Kerry, I've lost the plot. That's it. <laughs> you know when you can't see for looking? That's it. I was trying to put that bit over there. So I've just layered, kind of decoupaged this flower. So yeah, I'm super excited that this event will take place in November you know being a demonstrator it's it's great to run classes and events but when we do the corporate events where demonstrators gather it's just such a great thing it's such a great thing to be a part of right I'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals over this side so if anyone is thinking of joining my team please do get in touch because there are so many fabulous reasons why you need to join because okay the product is amazing but the community the life long friends you make there's just so much more I'm gonna come over a little bit so much more than than just the stamping I mean that's a major part of it but it's amazing so if it's something you've been thinking about, if you've got a wish list of product, it's going to pop this little leaf down in here. And of course, now if you join, you can add pre-order products from here into your kit. So that's an even better reason to join now. Yeah, Vienna is beautiful. I remember so many things from that trip. I remember going, just a small group of us, five of us, six of us maybe, we went to have ice cream with Shelley and Sterling. I mean, things like that don't happen on trips now because they're global and, you know, a couple of thousand people in the trip across the world. So, yeah, it was very special. Right, this other little bud is going to pop. I'm going to trim the end off. It's got quite a long stem on there. Teeny weeny bit of Tombow. Under there. I'm going to pop that one on there. And then my, just a note. I think we just need, we need to be together, don't we? So I've got everything crossed because obviously there are lots of things happening in the world right now. But we have to have hope. We have to have hope and try and look forward. Just take the backs off. And then, oh, oop. I'll put just, just a note. Oh, that was crooked. <laughs> it flew off as well. It was like, I don't want to stay here. I'm off. I'm out of here. Just a note. Love this style of script. And then I thought just to finish, the beautiful polished dots. Kay, you've made some amazing friends through your Lover Stamping app. And one of those is a very lovely Vicky Allison. There you go. See, look, it's, it's more. It's more than just stamps, ink and paper. I mean, they are amazing. Don't get me wrong. But the friends that we make, 
they're there for life, aren't they? There for life, so much more. So I'm just gonna pull off a couple of these beautiful polished dots. These are not in the new catalog, but we never know what could carry over. Oh, I'm just thinking, yeah, I thought I'd used clear ones, but I don't think I have. Don't think it really makes much of a difference. Stay. Stay. I've got my little rubber on the end here, which is about to fall off, but I keep that on the end just to protect it when it goes into my tool caddy. And there we go. So quite pretty, quite feminine, bit of wood grain, bit of texture, bit of background, but nothing too testing, nothing too difficult, bit of fussy cutting. So yes i i'm glad i'm glad kay it's it's just amazing isn't it it's the people that we meet and we're all lovely people we are all lovely people crafters are brilliant bringing my original is pretty much the same apart from i didn't color in this flower i'm glad to have you as a friend kay for sure you know sometimes you know we need at the event on Saturday, um, we had a, a video recording from Sarah, who is the CEO of, of Stampin' Up! now. She's kind of taken over from her mum, Shelley, who founded it. And she said about getting together with people in person and how, how we kind of open up to people that could be strangers. And, and I just think that's such a good thing. It's such a good thing that we feel in a place where, you know, we can kind of support and help each other. So I think I prefer the leaf that I added a bit of blush to, for sure. So very soft and subtle and pale papaya, petal pinky for me, aren't they? But that's what I love. Let's go with another. So yeah, what we do is amazing. I am very thankful that I found Stampin' Up, genuinely. So, card number two. What are we doing for time? 20 past 10, done lots of waffle. Oh, this bone, feel, bone folder feels much nicer than my other one. That other one's obviously had a lot of love. So, base layer again, which is five and three quarters by eight and a quarter. That's, that's, I love that, Kay. Friends are the family that we choose for ourselves. That's very true. It's a bit like that saying, can choose your friends, but not your family. But yeah. And it's always a super exciting time when we have a new catalogue coming our way. We're all buzzing, aren't we? Okay, so I'm going to do on this layer, like I did... on the front of my last one. So this piece measures three and three quarters by five and three eighths. I'm just gonna pull my blending brush back in. And I think I can add a little bit more color. It could be a bit more adventurous on this one because we're gonna have quite a bit of like white space otherwise. Oops, everything's falling down around me. So I'm doing top left and bottom right and just adding in some gentle colour. These are such, such a must. Such a must. And to be honest, if you don't have any aqua painters or water, water brushes, you can just use any old paintbrush that you've got lying around in your crafty stash. I um, don't think I need to add any more water. I'm gonna go back to this bit that's left in the lid and do a bit more splatting. So I'm just tapping it off with, probably could have done with a bit more water, but it will do for now.
Love that effect. So, so simple. Oh, goodness gracious. I've just, that's gone all over my desk up there and onto my MacBook. Oops. Good bit of splattage though. Good bit of splattage. And then what I'm going to do with this top, top left corner, I'm just going to kind of manipulate it with my bone folder just to kind of break the fibres down a little bit. Just so it kind of has a little bit of a, a bit of a curl on it. I'm going to lay it onto a piece of petal pink. So this should be just an eighth bigger at three and seven eighths. It's not a very accurate measurement. Look at that. Three and seven eighths by five and a half. Let's just make sure it fits nicely. It does. So it's going to flatten that little bit. Put the ruler away. I always find if things go back in their place, you're going to be able to locate them a little faster the next time you go for them. So I'm just kind of mounting those two together. I'm not sticking that down. I want that to kind of float about a little. This actually looks really pretty in real life. And then I'm going to lay this straight down onto my base. It's a pretty quick card. This would be a nice one to kind of batch. Why does that look longer? It is a smidge longer. I'm just going to trim a T. I'm so fussy, aren't I? I'm sorry that I'm fussy. I'm just trimming smidges. Slightly longer than five and three quarter. That's better. You won't see any difference. <laughs> and then I just need to cut a couple more hexagons. Exactly the same way as I did before. Let's take this piece. And I want this one. Grab that bit of washi. Let's try and utilize this piece of paper as much as we can. Now you do have to kind of make sure that this center hexagon is in the center. Otherwise you kind of get a very uneven frame. Pop that top plate on and we'll just run that through. So I've got a larger one, the piece that's left over from the centre. Just love that on its own. And then our lovely frame, which is quite central. Let's pop the dies back. So you will see some sneak peeks coming once some new product arrives. I've had one stamp set arrive, which I absolutely love from Stamping Up um, as part of the event we did on Saturday. So I'll give you a little show of that before we go, but I will do some sneak peeks. Ahead of the launch. Okay. I never apologise for being fussy. It means you care about what you're creating. Thanks, that's a nice way of putting it. That's really kind. I do feel, I feel sorry for Jason. He has to put up with me living with him because I am quite fussy and quite particular. He sometimes referred to it as being henpecked, but you know, I like to keep, keep things just so. I can't help it. I blame my mum because she's the same and inherited it from her. So I'm just gonna layer these two together. It's much easier to put together because I didn't cut into that bit like I did on the previous one. How pretty. 
And then I'm going to pop some dimensionals behind here like I did before. Oh, I'm nearly at the end. I have to go and find another packet off of my shelf. Yeah, I like to be particular. It's just in me. There's not a lot I can do about it. It is annoying though, because things like, they bug me. If a cupboard door isn't shut and I'm sat down having dinner and I can see one of the kitchen cupboards isn't closed, I have to get up and close it. I can't just look at it. That's quite terrible things like that but okay so I want this to be somewhere down at the bottom left so it kind of pops up from from that don't all men feel like that what hempecked mm, most probably most probably and then the other one I'm going to pop in behind I'm just going to gently pull up that top corner I'm going to wedge that one in like that so that it it just the frame the framed one overlaps it like that. The thing is, though, like I tell him things, or I ask him things, and he doesn't he doesn't do it next time. It's like why do they? put the plate right by the dishwasher but they physically can't open the door and put it inside <laughs> the recycling he knows he knows what I'm like about recycling and we've got a drawer you know with like recycling bins in it in the kitchen and he knows he knows that the recycling goes in there and when you open it you can see like one is for cans and one is for cardboard and he puts it on the top next to it Things like that really bug me. I'm like, just put it in. Open the drawer, put it in and close it. I think he's fearful that he's going to do it wrong and I'm, I'm going to nag at him. So, right, I'm going to pop this flower down. I'm going to have to trim. I'm not going to run and get. Let's use these pieces here. I like to leave these tiny little bit, bits in between. Right, where do we want one here because they are very useful that little one here will be very useful for sticking something down believe me poor man that's all I will say poor man hard to live with someone who's particular but my son's a bit the same as well Okay, next I'm going to punch out with the bow punch. Let's see if we can get what we need. Be super tight. I don't think I can. Let's do this one first. Oh, we should get that one out of there. Oop, confetti. Confetti party. I'm going to have to blow my nose. It's no good. Do apologise. Confetti everywhere. It's a good thing, especially about builder punches. <laughs> Is that a typical male? Yeah, I know. Got to chuckle there, haven't you? Trouble is, though, if he tries to load the dishwasher, I'm like, no, it doesn't go there. It doesn't go there. Just put it on the side. I'll do it myself. So I'm kind of like, we're our worst own enemies, aren't we? You've got to chuck all about them. Right, let us bring back in these two pieces. Now, I thought it'd be a little bit fun to give these a bit of colour, again, like I did with my blending brush, but maybe... Try and create a bit of texture. And there are different ways of doing this. In fact, I'm going to punch another. Where's all my scraps? Let's see if I've got a strip. That will do. Let's do another one of these. Let's 
let's add a bit of colour in two different ways. So first of all, actually, I'm going to tap on the ink. Let's just flatten that out a bit. And let's just like, oh, is that hair on there? Adding, I don't know, when I'm looking on my phone, it's coming over and, <laughs> and that your husband does your head in. I love that. See, I'm not alone. You're not making me feel bad for like pecking at him all the time. Don't know if you can see what I'm looking on my screen. It doesn't seem to, let's see if I can focus on that. It doesn't seem to be showing, but it's given like a bit of a hammered effect. And then I thought... Let's try colouring it with this. So let's just ink up that stamp and just stamp it straight over. And that was what I fell in love with. Just that effect. Yeah, like a stippled, like a hammer, hammer effect. So I came up with some different, different ones. So that was like the original one that I did. If my eyesight was good, I'd be able to see in my MacBook whether you could actually see how different they look. I don't know if it's because of the light coming in. But I did a couple of different ones, and, and this was the one that I liked with the stamped image on it. Now, on my original, I coloured it in totally. I think what I'm going to do is on this little one, add a bit of colour on there as well. And we'll see what it looks like. I'm going to just punch one more. See if we can get one out of here somehow. Because we don't want the whole of the stem there. And then I'm literally going to circular motion again and then just really add, really add some colour to it and see how that looks. Let's just do one more teeny tiny one. We've got any more scraps we can get one out of. This is how, how tight you get, isn't it? When you're literally pulling things out of your rubbish bin. Um, don't know if that'll be long enough. Could use the back of that though. Nobody's going to see the other side, are they? We'll just do that side. Again, add kind of some in, intense colour. it and it's at this point you take your wet wipe and just give your fingers a little clean because by touching all of that you've got colour on your fingers and then wipe it in your in your trousers or your apron if you're wearing your apron I used to wear my apron all the time when I was crafting and then I got out of the habit of doing it but it is handy Okay, we can have a little play around. So we've got a few different options here. So on my original, I added in the darker of the two, just because I felt there was a lot of white space. And I think I'm tempted to stick with it. If I go with this, I feel it's not enough. But bringing in my the one I did earlier, I think that one would have looked quite pretty in there. I'm going to stick with the plan. Give this a bit of a curl. My MacBook hasn't even gone to sleep on me today. What is going on? Curl the edges. The Tombow, nobody I'll ever see. But that 
that was a bit of recycled cardstock. Pop one down in there. One under there. Save those pieces for later. And then on my greeting, I thought I'd pull in, needed something deep because obviously we've got quite a lot of kind of white space and I needed my greeting to, to kind of pop out a bit from the card and I didn't want to use black and because I was using soft suede before. So I thought I would use the time for a happy dance stamp just because, you know, there are lots of reasons to have a happy dance. Um, I'm thinking now. I've got one I've done earlier because I'm using Craft White ink. Really tempted to buy myself the new one of this because it will look pretty in my storage. So this is a pigment ink. Pigment ink, and I'm just gonna. Oh, <laughs> I nearly dropped it then. Stamp it down. How pretty. You could at this point emboss, but I just left it plain. And I'm gonna take the one that I've done earlier because that will take a few minutes to kind of dry completely because it's pigment, it's slow drying. And I'm just going to. Trim around here really roughly. If you're just joining, do say hello. You can see somebody else is coming in. Just going up and down, not being super fussy, not going in and out of all the nooks and crannies. Kind of just up and down in a wavy line. like that and I'm going to add a dimensional now I'm going to have to cut another piece of quite a big piece there over on that side and then a teeny weeny bit of Tombow over there And I'm going to lay it somewhere over here. I think, and I just want to hold that down until it sticks to that flower for a moment. Kind of got double layers of dimensionals there, but I don't mind. This is quite, as it is, it's quite, it's not going to stay. Just need to hold it for a second. Um, yeah, this would be a perfect opportunity to create a little kind of box envelope to house it in. It's quite a sweet sentiment, isn't it? Time for a happy dance. I quite often do little happy dances. Bit of glue escaping there. And then to finish. You think that's what every demonstrator does when a pre-order arrives? Yeah, I think we do. I think we do, I'm kind of stalking the shipping at the minute to see like, has it shipped? Is it on its way? So we'll just pull in a couple of little dots. Don't want to put one on that, move you down a bit. Don't want to hide that splat, quite like that big splat there. And then maybe a smaller one up there. And there we go, I'm going to call that done. So pretty much the same as my original. I was kind of heavier on my splats on the original one. And as you can see, it's quite, it's quite layered. So I feel a nice card boxed envelope coming for this one. I think I should have done under there another dimensional because it's already on top of the hexagon so what I'm going to do after is just pop another little bit of dimension under there so
yeah, I was really pleased with how they turned out. Kind of a lot of white space, you know, a lot of one colour, but, you know, it's a colour that I love, petal pink. So, and I love the different, the different techniques on colouring in just your everyday kind of die cut pieces to make them look different. So if you didn't have cardstock in this colour, but you've got the ink and a blending brush or a sponge, then you can add colour to them. So, so there we go. Let's pull back in the original that I did earlier. So you will be seeing a lot more of this die set coming as I said I've ordered a stamp set that coordinates with it which I, I really do love I'm excited for it to come and to start crafting with it so you'll be seeing a lot more of that uh what is coming up don't forget we've still got pre um pre-order last chance list of the current annual catalogue booking is still open for just under a week using the flowing flowers for my um, six is this my six card class no this is actually a stack of cards class that I will be holding in the studio on Saturday the 16th of April in the morning and there will also be an option to purchase kits in the post so that's coming up that's over on my events website um, booking is still open for my six card class in the post I've forgotten what I'm using for that let me have a quick look Oh, Bows and Blossoms. Bows and Blossoms. So that's my sixth card class for this month. Um, check that out on my events website. I still have spaces for my Creative Escape on the 16th of July at the hotel. So I've got spaces for that. So you can head over there and check out the details. Um, there's just lots going on at the moment. It's busy, busy. So um, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're catching on the replay, please do let me know. P pop in the comments, hashtag replay. And if you are, if you found me on YouTube, um, please do get in touch. Please give me a like and subscribe. Um, and, you know, drop me a message, comment. So it's always nice to know who is about. So thank you again for stopping by. I hope you've enjoyed my very kind of floral feminine cards today. Um, and I'll be back with you all very, very soon. So take care and bye for now.